We're just about supposed to get ready to get started tonight for the presentation from uh, Keen, Pasang and Mingma. Um, first of all, um, my name is Derek Walsh. Uh, I own Outback Jacks, me and my family. Um, I have three kids down there. So tonight I'm going to be at my middle boy's uh, ninth birthday party. But tonight I'm with you. So uh, I want to say happy birthday, Ryan, and <laughs> I'll make it up to you the next day, all right? Um, you're all very, very welcome. Uh, Outback Jacks, as I said, is a family-owned business that's here for the last 15, 16 months. Um, it's thanks to you guys, and I know lots of you here, that it's, it's great support from Gora people and afar that it's got off to a flyer for us, really. Um, I suppose tonight is a very exciting night for us, a uh, chance to meet some legends of the Himalayas, uh, a chance for people here that want to maybe have that experience to speak firsthand to people that do it every day and possibly into the future if you want to go to the Himalayas that these boys will bring you there uh, safely and talking to them over the last couple of days the whole core about their business is customer service uh, they have a hundred percent retention rate of clients which after listening to some of the stories on the mountains and the service to provide, it's, I have to say, well done to them, really, to be honest with you. Um, we're going to do a sign-up. Uh, Jack Woolskin Ireland have sent us a 100 euro voucher for any Jack Woolskin product for everyone that signs up tonight. Uh, the boys will you'll become part of their mailing list if you want to, so I'm going to pass around a sign-in form, and at the end of the night, we'll just pull a winner, and someone will have a voucher for 100 euros worth of Jack Woolskin product, okay? Um, also on the cheers, um, I've left a business card for anyone that has any questions about tonight. Uh, we'll be in contact with the, the lads so you can come back to us if you want to and we can get your questions answered or put you in touch with them. And also, um, there's a voucher there, we have a sports massage therapist clinic room in the shop, um, Peter Ford, and he's left everyone a 10 euro voucher, so if anyone needs a rub, Peter will sort you out, okay? Um, Afterwards, we'll, anyone that wants pictures, Emma here will take your picture, we'll do it on the backdrop, and uh, we'll post them to Facebook, and you can get them off there, or come back into the shop or send us an email, and we'll email you out the photograph, okay? Um, and I suppose we're going to start with Keen is going to talk first. So Keen is a Dublin lad, he's climbed Everest, um, he's in partnership with Mingma and Pesang. So he'll talk to start the talk off for everyone, and um, he'll talk us through. Tonight we're going to have a presentation on climbing and trekking in the Himalayas, and that it's not all about Everest, that there's a lot more stuff in, in the Himalayas than Everest. So, And I suppose I'd encourage you at the end of the night to come, meet, talk to the lads. If you have any, any questions, they will help you out, okay? So uh, enjoy the night, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Derek, and thank you all for coming to the presentation. Hope you enjoyed the evening. Um, I'd like to thank Derek and all the staff at uh, Outback Jacks for all their help today in setting up, and also Peter O'Connell and, and Gavin John Paul Hennigan for putting us in touch with Derek. So um, I'm going to tell you a bit about my, my story, how I got into climbing, how I met the guys here, and... How, how I started working with them and climbing Everest. Um, I first started climbing with my dad. You know, I'd always uh, dreamt of climbing Everest since I was a little boy. He used to bring me out hill walking, you know, from four years old up to eight or nine. But uh, when I turned 10, I, I didn't really want to hang out with my dad anymore. And, you know, not many people my age were doing climbing or hill walking at that uh back in the 80s. But, um, you know, I went back in, I played tennis for 20 years, uh, tried to be professional, so thought I was going to win Wimbledon, but uh, I think climbing Everest is easier. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I loved tennis, but after I realized I wasn't going to win Wimbledon, I decided to get back into hill walking and trekking, and uh, went out to the Himalayas in 2009, and, 
you know, it was always something I wanted to do and, and couldn't believe I, I got a chance to go out there for a trek to Everest Base Camp. And, you know, when I went out there, I found the people so welcoming, so friendly. You know, I was in, in the best mountains in, in the world, learning about their culture, about their history, trekking through this uh, Kumbu Valley here. It was an amazing experience, and, you know, I never thought I'd, I'd actually go back, but, uh, you know, once once I uh, got to base camp that year, I uh, this is I thought I, you know, I felt pretty good, and I went on to climb a, a beginner peak called Labuje, six thousand one hundred meters, and then once I did that, I was like, wow, this is amazing! Like this is a new sport that I want to continue, and I thought I'd like to maybe have a go at Everest or Am Blan, and. Uh, you know, I started putting the, the plan in place in the end of 2009, 2010. But all my training, well, most of my training was done here in Ireland. You know, even though we don't have the high mountains, it's a perfect place to train. And um, this picture of Peter from Galway here, training with us one day. And, um, you know, the mountains of Ireland are, are beautiful. And, you know, it's a great, great place to be able to go out the weekend and go for a hill walk with your friends. But you have to, I took Everest, I, I thought about taking the steps. I was only a trekker at this stage and, you know, I started getting some experience in Scotland. <coughs> uh, went over there winter, learned how to ice climb, use crampons, use ice axes, and took it in steps. So I was always learning off different people who had been to the Himalayas climbing or to the Alps. And uh, I'm sure some of you have been to Kilimanjaro. Maybe? No? Okay. Well, that was uh, one, of the, one of the trekking peaks that I did. It was uh, quite a tough climb that, the, that, uh, that, that year. I had to climb in a, in a day because I had to rescue my fiance at the time. And uh, it was really hard um, climb because going up at that, those altitudes so quick was and um, quite dangerous, but I knew my body and I learned a lot on that, that day. Um, then I start, you know, I went to Mount Blanc, went to the Alps, brought a team of Irish people, 10, ten Irish from all over, from Sligo, from Kerry, from Dublin. And it was amazing to, to climb in the Alps. It was somewhere where I went camping. I was younger with my family. And, you know, I finally got to climb Mount Blanc, 4,810 meters. So I was beginning to take steps towards Everest, you know, always thinking, okay, see how I go on the next climb, see if I still am enjoying, see if I get, got scared. And uh, I went to Denali in 2011, and that was my first big expedition. And a few weeks before I left, um, an Irish guy from Cork had a very bad accident. He lost uh, a lot of fingers and toes, so due to frostbite, and that was really a mental challenge. I didn't think I was, you know, I was worried about going over there. I'd heard of a lot of accidents, about the weather, about people losing fingers, toes, to frostbite. So, you know, it was a big, big step to go. My first major expedition, 2011 to Denali, and unfortunately we didn't make the summer, and we got stuck at Camp 4 at about 5,100 meters. We had to ran out of food, ran out of uh, fuel after day five, and uh, we had to like, eat eight-year-old stashes in the snow, and I didn't have a book or iPad or, or iPod, so I was reading all the labels of my gear, figuring out how to wash my gear. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was a, a real, again, it was a real mental, mental uh, test for me and physical, you're carrying a lot of gear, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed the experience. There was great climbers there with me and learning from them. A few had just been on Everest and Alaska is a beautiful place and, you know, I really uh, learned a lot on that climb. Then a few months later, I went uh, to my first 8,000 meter peak, uh, a mountain called Choyu in Tibet, 8,200 meters. And I was quite worried going. I'd only uh, come back from Denali maybe five, six weeks. But then I met Pasang and his family and, you know, they really showed me how to climb the big mountains in the Himalayas and gave me the confidence and I learned so much from the guys. 
this is a big ice rack that we had to climb about 7,000 meters, 7,000 meters high. And uh, you know, your first time at 7,000 meters and you're climbing up this big steep ice hoping it won't uh, collapse while you're on it. So a lot of my training, I was in the gym doing Pilates, doing uh, weights, doing endurance, and that all came into play here. And uh, you know, I felt, felt strong, was able to climb through the dangerous parts quite quickly. And you know, learning the, the rope skills and different uh, skills off the guys, they, they really showed me how to, to climb the big mountains in the Himalayas. And when I reached the summit of uh, Choyu, you could see Everest. Here's Pasang, his uh, older brother Tundu. It was like a, a really big moment for me. I, cu I couldn't believe that I was actually up on an 8,000 meter peak in the death zone. Um, you read a lot about the death zone and it's very hard to describe, but your, your body starts uh, dying. You know, your, your body's not getting enough oxygen. And I, I felt it, but I also felt, wow, I can't believe I'm up here with some of the best Sherpas in the world. And, you know, I've had such a great time climbing to you. And they were saying, yeah, King, come on, you can, you have to work a bit harder on different things. And, you know, then you'll be ready for Everest in 2012. So, 2012 in March, <coughs> went back to Nepal, and Everest takes about eight weeks to climb. You have to get your body ready for the uh, altitude. You have to climatize slowly. Uh, so, start off here at a base camp. Well, you start off in Lukla, well, Kathmandu actually, and then. Uh, you fly to Lukla, it's about a seven day trek up to base camp, 5,300 meters. And then you go through one of the most dangerous parts of Everest called the Cumbu Rise Fall, up to Camp 1 at 6,100 meters. And this, this part here, um, even though it's not very high altitude, it's, you have big blocks of ice hanging over you, big crevasses below you. So you gotta be really careful. You gotta move as quickly as possible. And a lot of my training was uh, practicing on the like uh, on the couch while my girlfriend was watching TV, just with my gloves, practicing how to change anchors. You spend time in the garden on these ladders that we used to have to cross. And um, my neighbors thought I was mad, but <laughs> um, so that's the first section. In 2014, there was a, a very bad avalanche or ice collapse that that killed 16 Sherpas, and I assume you heard about that. And it's a beautiful place, but also a very deadly place, and you want to get through there as quickly as possible. And again, your training, your practice of your rope skills, and you know, being with these guys, uh, making sure it gives you any little tricks to make you move faster through this area. <coughs> then the next section of Everest is uh, up the Western Coombe, and I think it's one of the easier parts, quite flat from 6,100 meters to 6,400. But uh, in 2012, <coughs> a big avalanche came down off the here and destroyed our camp one. And you, you, want try, you want to try to get through this area again as quickly as possible. Anywhere where there's danger, you want to move quickly. And you know, your muscles are starved with oxygen, so it's not that easy. It's not like climbing up Crow Patrick, you have to push your body hard and, and hope your your body is adjusting to the, the high altitude. <coughs> the next section, you climb up the steep Lotse face, which is quite a, a steep ice climb, up to Camp Tree at about 7,200 meters. And uh, that's, you know, quite a, there's some big, big ice blocks on the Lotse face. 2012, there was another avalanche that hit one of our Sherpas, Pam Cherry, and he was very lucky to survive. Uh, if it wasn't from because of these guys being quick and having the skill and strength to get him down, um, he, he probably would have died. So, <coughs> um, then you go from Camp Three up to Camp Four here, just below the death zone at 7,950 meters, and then you, sp you spend a bit, few hours there. And then try and get up to the summit, 
past the Hillary step and onto the summit. So you spend a lot of time going up the mountain, going into Camp 1, back down, Camp 2, back down, rest at base camp. So you're a lot of rotations up and down the mountain. <coughs> In 2012, you know, I, I knew the guys from Choyu and a lot of time I spent with them in their in their tent, drinking tea and eating shirt for stew and just having fun learning from them, them telling me stories about their their experience on Everest and other mountains. And it was really, really nice to they were great friends and it was really uh, special to be <coughs> be with them climbing do my dream, my first dream, climbing Everest. <coughs> this is uh, the rescue of Pam Cherry I was talking about. And, you know, to see these guys go up so quickly and, and help Pam Cherry and get them down as quickly as possible is amazing to see how, how good they were rescuing Pam Cherry. And, you know, they all worked together. We tried to help, but, you know, these guys are so strong. We're, we were suffering a bit up there, you know, we're tired and the altitude does affect you, but these guys were so quick at getting them out of there, getting them out of danger, and getting back to Kathmandu. <coughs> this is one of my favorite sel selfies I've taken. <laughs> uh, I think I nearly lost two fingers because of it, but I still have them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got to the summer of Everest, myself and Mingma, um, at about 6 a.m., was it? Yeah, so it's very hard to the feeling and um, you know you're only halfway there you have to you have to get down and you can see people struggling there <coughs> there's no rope either so it was quite windy that day and uh, I made a decision not to bring an ice axe <coughs> and you know I was digging into the snow to keep my balance you know if you have a little slip here you could fall a long way and uh, you know you have to keep your concentration if you're climbing for eight hours, nine hours at that stage, and, you know, nearly a month and a half on the mountain, so you, you're tired, <coughs> your muscles are sore, but you got to keep focus. It, you know, you have to get out of there, and you can't, you enjoy the summer, but you know you have to get down, and 80% of accidents happen on the way down, so that was always in my mind, thinking, get down safe, get down, and take your time, don't, don't, start celebrating, just focus and keep your concentration. <coughs> this is a small uh, video. So <coughs> this is from the summer. And uh, you can see the prayer flags there. Lots of there, the fifth highest. Fifth highest mountain in the world. And um, you can see the curvature of the earth. It's not a great video, but, um, you know, up there, I, I couldn't believe you stand on the very, very top part, and I couldn't believe I was up there. It was amazing. I dreamt of for, for years and worked really hard to get there in, in Ireland, trained really hard, saved money, and, you know, had to give up a lot of things to, to climb the mountain and, you know, took off my mask to say a few words, but... You got to be careful because your your mask can freeze as well. So you got to be careful that it doesn't. Well, if it does freeze, you have to blow into it to defrost it. And you know, I just told told uh, thanked everyone for their support and my friends, family, girlfriend, and there's Mingma, I think there. But uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. It's uh, I'll never, something I'll never forget. And you know, hopefully I'll I'll go up again someday. But I'm looking at other mountains with the guys. And, uh, you know, it was a very special moment for me. But I couldn't have done that without the Sherpas, without Mingma Pasang, Tundu, and the rest of the family and, and the other Sherpas. Like, they were unbelievable throughout the expedition. There were some hard times and in 2012. And, you know, over the years, I, I've learned a great deal from the guys, and like I've been very lucky to to climb with them, and felt safe on Everest with them, and every mountain I've climbed with them, it was, you know, a great honor to to climb with such uh, legends of the Himalayas. <coughs> but you know, I, I see Everest uh, 
I, I was a beginner climber 2009, 2010. Two years later, I was on top of Everest. And you know, I, I look at Everest as the start of my, my climbing career. <coughs> and even on the way down, I was looking at other mountains, Makalu, a lot today. <coughs> and the, recently in October, we, uh, we climbed the Himalayan first ascent in the Valley of Rawalan, which was a tough mountain, I think harder than Everest, and uh, 22, 22 hour summit day. But uh, the climbing mountain, the guys in their home valley that had never been climbed, was uh, an amazing feeling. And, you know, especially after the earthquakes, their, their valley got very badly uh, hit by the earthquakes this year. So it was amazing to be in their valley with a great Sherpa team, a very strong client team, and we climbed the first ascent. <coughs> and then November, with uh, the Galway man, Gavin, uh, we climbed Amin de Blan, and another Irishman, uh, John Burke. Went and that, you know, since going to the Himalayas, I, I, always, uh, <coughs> I always wanted to climb, and Again, you know, it was the first time I climbed with Irish, Irish guys in the Himalayas, and it was very special. You know, there's Pasang, John, Futemba, and Gavin, and you can see Everest in the background there. But um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to to many climbs with the guys, and I've been very uh, lucky to to meet them and, and climb with them. And now, uh, it's a great honor to work with Ming and Pasang. Um, so I'd like to <coughs> welcome, I'd like to thank Ming Men Pistang for coming to Ireland and visiting. And I hope you're enjoying your stay. <laughs> and I'd like to welcome uh, 19 times ever, ever summit here, um, Ming Men Cherie Sherpa. Thank you for coming. And my name is Mingma Chiri Sherpa. I am from Rolvaling Bailey, east of the Kathmandu, Nepal. And this village is my uh, Nab village. This village is a 4,100 meter elevation. I was born and uh, grew up in the, this valley. So this is my climbing experience. Yeah, I I started in the climbing in the 1991 to till now. I submitted mountain Everest 19 time and the K2 one time, Choyu four time, and Daulagiri one time, Sisapangma one time, and Manasulu three time. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is our. Our seven brother, I'm a fifth son. And this one of the, my clients, 1996, Everest, Makalu he's from Taiwanese. I was there in the famous 1996 Everest disaster. And with Makalugawa, I spent in the we spent in the above the eight thousand meter forty eight hours. But even though we, my clients, are safely back to camp and home. And this is a Hilary step, and the Mister and the Keen and the, this my younger brother is a Tundu. and from here to summit. At uh, least in the uh, different the clients, the past clients, and the, they take one hour in the summit. And slow clients, they take in the one and a half hours in the summit. Okay. So I'm sure you, a lot of you have heard of Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, the first two to climb Mount Everest in 1953, which uh, Mingmas and Pasang's father was part of that expedition. Um, so it's in their blood. <laughs> um, but climbing the Hillary Step, 
you know, once you get past there, you're nearly there, you're an hour. And, and you know, at, at sea level, that's no problem, but you can see it's, you know, quite high up. You can see the curvature of the earth. There's old, ro <coughs> old ropes there. So you, you're tired, you're, you're really, uh, you've been climbing for hours in the death zone. You've got to be really careful to clip onto the right rope. And I, I watched Tundu and Mingma, seeing where they placed their feet, seeing uh, where, where they, you know, how they climbed it. So I just copied them and uh, it was fun. Uh, but when I got up to the south summit before that and saw the sun rise and saw the Hillary step, it was amazing. I knew if I could climb over that, I was there. And it was very special to, uh, if you think of the history, and think of wow, what they did back in 1953 was uh, quite a amazing feat. And this picture is uh, one of my summit in the K2, 1997. I am the first Nablus to climbing in the Mount K2. And it was my hardest in the climbing in the so far. <laughs> so I worked in the before in the European companies many years. And I thought in the then after I own and I established on, on my company in the SN Himalayas, Sherpa Company. And this is uh, my 2014 in the team clients in the climbing Sherpa before climbing in the puja and the ceremony and Everest best game. So this is my service for best game and the trackers and the climbers in the 10, best game 10. And this is my best game dining 10. And so this is uh, during the November and uh, within the John and Gavin and Keen and there is other team so then this is my AMRW base game service. And thank you very much and uh, all of the coming here. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mingna. Um, well done. Um, so next up, I'd like to uh, invite Mingna's young, younger brother and the youngest of the seven, and um, nine times Everest summit here, and uh, Poseidon Tenzin Sherpa. And first of all, thank you very much for coming here. So I'm very happy to share our experience, which I learned, and our family's experience. So thank you very much for coming to share these things. It's, yeah, my name is Pasang Tin Sherpa, and the youngest brother of seven brothers. So I'll be told by the keen. So I started climbing when I was the 16. Before the 16, I started some trekking and hiking in here in Europe or in Alps, we say the hill walking. So normally in our place, that's a lot of hills. So always <laughs> when I was young, yeah, we have a lot of cows to, and all the lot of sheep to graze. So normally with the cows and see if I'm going to hill walking together. So I started when I was a very young, but I started climbing 6,000 meter mountain. We call the 5,000, above the 5,000, we call the trekking peak. So I started trekking peak at the age of 16. And I'm lucky that because of my brother, 
I got the summit of Mount Everest at the age of 18.